looking forward to those two visits. Those are always uh, great events. I can remember doing those events as a player here before we played uh, in Atlanta. So I know our players will be looking forward to it as well. Um, our guys are uh, good to go and ready to move on to Georgia Tech. I know uh, they're excited for this week of practice. It's kind of a different schedule for us with Thanksgiving being involved and uh, a lot of the guys get to go home that live you know, within a close enough radius to share time with their family for Thanksgiving and then return here and then travel over to Atlanta uh, as a team uh, as we prepare for Georgia Tech. So with that, I'll open it up. Kirby, I know there were weather issues in the first half this past week, and then the week before, Auburn's got a really good defense. But if you look at Jake's last three games, he's always been so accurate, but he's gone three straight where he hadn't completed 50%. Is there any common thread, or is, or is each thing just kind of an isolated issue as far as game by game? You know, it's hard to put a finger on it. Uh, Auburn, they, they play really tight covers. There's no really easy throws. I thought these guys, um, the guys who just play Texas A&M, they're, they're passionate. Pass efficiency defense is really stellar. They do uh, some good things defensively. Uh, their coordinator was at Notre Dame. He's done some really good things. So it makes it makes it tough at times. But at times you got to hit the open guy. I think Jake would be the first to tell you that we missed a couple and uh, made a couple. So there's there's no easy throws when you start looking at it out there. It's not like there's a gimme here or there. You, you try to get high percentage throws and. We had a couple of those uh, to the back in the flat and to Charlie and to the swing passes, but we got to do a better job uh, helping him out. And uh, he's got to do a better job hitting the ones when they're open. Kirby, as you look at tech and tape from this year, have you seen them progress as the year has gone on that they get more comfortable with this system? Yeah, I think their offense has grown and uh, they got better and better from the beginning of the year towards the end of the year. It's like two different teams. I think they're they were learning a new system. And anytime you're learning a new system, you have growing things and you push through those. Um, their quarterback's done a tremendous job. We know him well, recruit him out of high school. Uh, James has been extremely athletic and uh, he's, he got better throwing the ball. There we go. He threw the ball with a lot of confidence Thursday night um, and their team's growing. Kirby, a follow-up on um, Jake. I just wondered, is, is his arm health okay? And, and I know, with, you know, as many throws as they throw all year long and, and um, him trying to get timing down with receivers and that kind of stuff, is his, is his arm healthy? Yeah, his arm's fine. What's different preparing for Georgia Tech without the triple option? I know it was kind of an uh, all-consuming thing for this week, usually. Yeah, they still have a lot of elements of the option. So uh, obviously when I say a lot, I don't mean as much as what they had previously because they, I mean, they were all in when they were triple option. They have elements of the triple. They still, I mean, you can't just flip it over and just go completely to a nine when that's what your roster's made of. So um, they have dive, pitch keys, they have reads, they have perimeter runs, inside runs. They've got elements of the option. So. It is different from a, from a perspective of not having to do everything we used to do, which was completely different. So where it was 100% different defense, it might be 50% difference now with some of the things they're doing. Coach, on the injuries, uh, Stokes, Mays, I think I saw Tyreek McGee out there and, and Cager, can you catch yourself? And, and was there any, anybody else that didn't that game? Yep, Tyreek cleared uh, out last week, was able to practice, I'm talking about Tyreek McGee, was able to practice a couple days and uh, thought we could use him. He, he made a good play in special teams and uh, got really involved with the special teams units and, and he helped uh, provide depth in the secondary. So it was great to get him back, great getting back for his last game because he's a kid who has had a lot of uh, injuries and has been in and out of the roster. Cade was, just like we said last week, was, was cleared to go, was going to be able to go if we needed him to. We wanted to try to avoid it if we could. Uh, and we were able to get through the game um, without having to use him. Um, we talked about Cager after the game. He didn't feel like uh, that he was able to go and was going to be 100%. Um, but there's no, nothing new on those two. I mean, as far as we're moving forward, they should be cleared to practice this week, and we're hopeful they'll play. There's Stokes. another one, right? Stokes. Yeah, Stokes got dinged in the game. I was on the – I think it was on the offensive uh, pass interference play where he, he, he and the receiver kind of ran together. 
Uh, he took a jolt, but uh, we think he's going to be fine. We think he'll be fine to go today. Did Kate go special teams? He was listening. Yeah, he did. Uh, I think he did the um, the PAT field goal team. Kirby, I guess another tech preparation question, because when you were practicing and preparing for Paul Johnson, you take time out in the spring and in preseason camp and devote a couple of periods to the the cut blocking. And the, how has how, how did that change this year? Uh, as far as what did you use that time that you used to spend on that? And, and how comfortable were you before you felt good implementing a plan for tech, given that there was so many unknowns at the start of the season with what they were going to do? Well, I don't know if it was unknown. I mean, Jeff Howard's an offensive coordinator. He has an offensive staff. You know what they do. So you try to plan based on that. You know, we, we get to watch. We have a, a person that scouts ahead. It's, it's advanced scouting. So they watch the teams that we're going to play, and we try to look down the road and say, what's going to be really difficult? What's different? Not necessarily, though, they got really good players. It's, it's, you, you look at teams and say, what is it based on that's so different they do that we can't handle? So – we, we say, hey, Georgia Tech's got a uh, very different offensive system than what we face week to week. Even now, they're different. So during the off week, we took some periods and, and, and worked on some different things they were doing. So it's never based on who you play in the future, what their record is. It's what they're doing offensively or defensively that's different than what you see. <clears throat> Purdy, uh, statistically, this team compares a little bit to your last team at Alabama. Do you think there are similarities, and can that, in 2019, be successful? I don't even remember that team in Alabama. I really don't. I, I mean, I was so consumed in, I guess you're talking about the year we played Clemson in the national title. Is that correct? In terms of it was really good defense, offense was so so. Yeah, like I said, I don't. it's hard for me to compare that because I didn't look at that team through uh, the glasses of a – head coach. I looked at that team through the glasses of a defensive coordinator where I was really focused on that. Um, obviously, this team has some uh, really good traits. I don't know how they compare to that team. I, I can't even remember that team. I do know to be successful that we've got to play better in every facet of our team, special teams, defense, and offense. But certainly, we have to improve offensively the most in order to get where we want to go. Can you just talk about your relationship with Jeff and some of the other guys, Brent Key on that staff? I know probably somebody you're pretty close with. Yeah, I've, uh, Jeff and I have worked on the same staff at Alabama. I got a lot of respect for Jeff. He does a got a, a ton of energy. He does a tremendous job. He leaves no stone unturned. He's looking for every competitive advantage he can get, whether it's through recruiting, whether it's through innovation, whether it's through scheme. Uh, well, it's through motivation, you know, uh, he's a high energy guy, and and Brent's the same way. Brent's Brent's a, a Georgia Tech guy. I mean, you know, he played there. He played there while I was playing here, and uh, he and I have, have never been on staff together, but we've always crossed paths and uh, been friends in recruiting. We go to the same schools as assistant coaches, and uh, I see Brent in the off season a lot. So I have a lot of respect for those guys and the job they do. Here's Georgia Tech, so you guys line there a little thin and dinged up. I'm curious how you see that matchup with your offensive line against their defensive front. Yeah, I mean, when you look across the board, they've got guys that play quite a bit of snaps. They rotate a lot of guys in there. They play a uh, ton of players. Jeff's always done that. He, he had that uh, philosophy when he was at Mississippi State, when he was at Florida. I think that helps build uh, morale and self-worth within your team. You have more kids bought into the organization when they know they're going to get an opportunity to contribute. So they play a lot of guys, and they move, and they got athletic guys up there. So, I mean, we, we, we got to worry about ourselves more than we got to worry about tech. And that's, that's the case every week. You, you have to get better at you, and it's not really about the other team. And that's, that's what we focus on regardless of who we're playing. If you guys had any more marquee non-conference games going forward, do you wonder what kind of fact that sort of has on the significance of this game. You know, being, you know, typically they usually, or typically the big power five non-conference game of the season. I don't worry about the impact. I mean, no, I think this is one of the most traditional rivalries in all of college football. And I don't know that our scheduling is going to change the fact that it's not going to move the proximity of their university and ours. I mean, 
we're always going to have uh, interstate rivals, whether it's through recruiting, uh, whether it's through recruiting students, uh, really through anything. So I think the the history and tradition is there. That this game is always going to be a, a, a big factor. Kirby you touched on that a little bit right there. I was going to ask you about just the rivalry with Georgia Tech. Where, where do you think it uh, fits in into the grand scheme of things and your memories of it? And also just wondering with, with, with Jeff there and kind of a change in system, do you find yourself running into Tech coaches and running into them on the recruiting trail a little bit more than you did when they were running a, a, a very specific system before? Uh, well, actually, the second one first. I don't know if I can remember the first one. Uh, the, the second one, we do run into them um, a lot. Um, we ran into them before because nobody's not going to recruit in our state, let's be honest. I mean, there's good football players in our state. They probably recruited different type players in a lot of uh, situations, like tight end. Obviously, they weren't recruiting a lot of tight ends during their last staff. and. And you can tell that Jeff and his staff have made that a priority through their transfers and through who they're recruiting. So you come across those guys uh, much more. As far as the, the rivalry, I mean, it's it, it's always, I mean, when I came to school here as a player, it was one of the biggest rivalries there was. It was what you talked about as a freshman. It's what was ingrained in you to, you know, have the hate and build that up. Uh, I think because of the conferences and because of, um, the, the importance of winning your conference, that may have diminished some in regards to over the time, but the game, the rivalry, is usually based on wins and losses and who's winning, the, who's winning those games. Georgia has so many rivalries that you can't say one's more important than the other. Uh, you don't think it's important, then lose it, and then it'll be really important. <laughs> and I know the importance of this game, and I know the significance it has to so many of our fans especially the, 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 the crowd that, that may be older that traditionally Georgia Tech was a national powerhouse year in and year out. Uh, it means so much to them. Curry, since we last saw you on Saturday, LSU goes to the West, so if you want to comment on that future matchup, you have more than welcome to also. <laughs> uh, what's the, um, the challenge of focusing this week? Uh, you know, we have a big game the week after. Well, the, the, the challenge is about the rivalry. So, when you think about this game, records are thrown out. None of that matters. You know, they finished Thursday. This is a huge opportunity and stage for them. Uh, we acknowledge that. Um, a lot of our kids will be playing in front of their home crowd, their, where they're from, their community, because of so many kids being from the Atlanta area. So that's the focus and that's the concentration. And, and our guys understand that. We've got a mature team. and. We said the other day that the most important step is the next step. Georgia Tech is the next step. And they've got a football team that's peaking at the right time, played a really good game Thursday night. So we got to go out and play a good football game. Kirby, as you get later in the season, um, when you go through the wear and tear of all this, is there any extra help as a team to help with injury prevention and rehabilitation? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we drive recovery home. Recovery is so critical to your, your soft tissue muscles, and uh, part of recovery is rest. So we talk about sleep, making sure you get proper sleep, extra treatment. Um, we cut time out of practice, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, that you hate doing as a coach, but you're trying to get return on investment and say, okay, you gotta spend this time in the cold tub. You gotta spend this time in the training room. Uh, instead of walking through on Friday and going straight to dinner, we took 20 more minutes and got everybody some extra recovery because we think that can be the difference at the end of the year if you're out recovering a team then you've got an opportunity to have a competitive advantage and we're trying that. Going uh, back over to the history of, a, of the rivalry and everything, do you remember anything from your experience playing George Tech? If I see it correctly, uh, you want to read a little more. Yeah, the, the memory I have is probably the worst. It's like it's what you always do, you don't remember the Positive sometimes, you remember the, the bad. It was my last home game at uh, Sanford Stadium and, and lost on a game winning field goal, uh, the Joe Hamilton's drive. So that was my last memory of Sanford Stadium. Thank God I got into coaching, so I got to fix that. But otherwise, that would have been the last time that you know I was in there. And that, that was a tough loss that, uh, you know, when Georgia had won at that time, I think maybe three or four. I'm not sure how many in a row they'd won. And uh, our senior class lost it to a well coached, really good football team. Coach, are you going to chance to enjoy Thanksgiving and 
Yeah, the actual Thanksgiving Day, I wouldn't say the week. The week is a work week for us, and uh, it's a game week. So, you know, Thursday we get to you know, finish a little bit earlier, move some things up. It makes for an awkward scheduling. But I say awkward because, you know, it's different than a normal game week, but it's not awkward for Thanksgiving. It's what everybody does. And your goal in high school football is to be playing on Thanksgiving, and your goal in college football is to be relevant and uh, still have an importance to the game. And, for our kids, um, I know they're fired up to get to see their families, but they like this game. It's an exciting game. Coach, you mentioned the recruiting trail some today. What is it that Sam Pittman does so well out there for you? Uh, Sam's personality. Uh, he kind of just oozes with confidence, and the, the, the offensive linemen really appreciate that. He's very genuine. Um, you don't get a sales pitch. You get his natural, uh, instinctive self. And a lot of you guys have seen his personality through social media. and. That's really the same way he is with the kids. And the, the, the kids, the players, gravitate to that. And uh, I think that's uh, very, very natural for him, and he's done a tremendous job recruiting for us. Uh, yeah, Kirby, it looks like this defense is one of the most statistically dominant uh, in the league, and yet you're talking about the need for the system improvement. Where on defense do these guys need to get better this, this final week? Turnovers. We've got to force turnovers. We've got to be better in the red area. We've slipped in the red area the last couple of weeks. Um, we don't sustain at the end of games, meaning we give up a, a, a pace drive or a, a rhythmic drive where somebody gets on rhythm, and we got to be able to stomp on people's throats when you get them down. And uh, What they've done well is a lot of things, but what they can improve on is several specific things that we try to work on each week, and we try to demanded of them. The great thing about this defense is they, don't, they, they take criticism well. They handle criticism well. They realize that we, we, they want to be the best, and to be the best means you never arrive. So you have to keep driving to get better, and they've, uh, they've really accepted that. Kirby noticed after the, I guess it was after the Auburn game, you talked about Trayvon and how you guys had to get him more involved and, and kind of wanted to challenge yourselves to do that. What what? did he do against Texas A&M? It seemed like he was on the field a lot more, especially on first and second down. How, how did you guys use him there? Yeah, we met as a staff and just felt like he was one of our best 20 football players and we weren't getting the most out of him. And, uh, you know, I just forced upon them to say, hey, he's, he's got to be on the field, so we're going to figure out a way. And some of that was dictated by what Texas A&M did. Um, and he, he has a unique skill set. You know, he's 270 pounds and he's different than some of our other guys. So, uh, He's, he's done a really good job. We're just trying to find ways to use his athleticism. So, you know, when they're in open sets, it allows him to play a little more, and, and Texas A&M chose to do that some, so it helped us. I have two more questions, two more questions. One, can you just tell me about what you've seen in Jordan Mason running back? And two, just I understand what gravel means to so many, but I'm curious if you are concerned that, you know, kids will look at the record and think, oh, this isn't as good as he was replaced before. You know, we don't need the Paris Is there concerns about that? Uh, open with the first one. Mason is an unbelievable back. First of all, I've seen him play several you know, Thursday night games. I've got to watch him. He's physical, man. Low to the ground. He runs mad. Uh, and he's thick. You know, he's heavier than the backs that we faced. And great strength in his lower body. I just respect his running passion and his energy. I love watching him run. And he does it the right way. As far as our kids, no, I don't, I don't think you have to worry about that because we don't, I mean, we don't look at the record. The record, just like last week, I mean, we don't look at the record. We look at the team on the tape, and uh, that's more important than the record. So you know, we're not scoreboard <laughs> watching. We're not record watching. We're, we're looking at the guy across from us, and uh, we're really, as simple as it sounds, I know you all think that people don't do this, but we're trying to take the next step, which is George Tech. Two more questions. Richard Hukano, uh forced fumble and recovered fumble. What has he brought to this defense this year, and particularly later in the season? Uh, he's playing with a lot of energy and passion. He's practicing better. Uh, he takes um, a lot more pride in making his calls and learning the game plan that he can make good decisions on the field in the heat of the moment. Um, I think he, I think he's taking a nice step forward in regards to that. Uh, and he's. Um, he plays really hard. I mean, he doesn't always play with great eye control and great discipline, but he plays really hard. He gets after the ball. You know, he attacks the ball. How encouraged are you by some of the uh, returns you've had recently and um, you know, any one of the reasons that 
You know, kickoff return different than punt return. I mean, I think kickoff return. Brian provided us a major spark. Wish we'd maybe done it earlier. He he uh, he was the off guy for so long. He's such a good blocker, a good decision maker that he's been good as the primary returner, and he's done a good job. It's not like all of a sudden he's gotten better. He just he's gotten opportunities. You don't get a lot of opportunities when the ball is kicked uh, into the end zone. Uh, and then punt return. You know, I thought I thought Dom took what was there and got what was there, but I thought our hold up unit did a much better job the last two weeks of giving him opportunities to make plays. Uh, and we still got to make more out of what we're getting. Thanks.